fire. The Crosbys have recently purchased a new one. It's a hard life on the farm. Long hours, unpredictable income. The difficulties can outweigh the rewards. One Manitoba family was struggling to save their way of life until three of the brothers whipped up a restaurant recipe that's getting rave reviews. They were motivated by survival, inspired by light from the sun. Here's the CBC's Krista Erickson with Lux Soleil. The inspiration for this restaurant in one of Winnipeg's trendy neighborhoods may be surprising. Hey, one blue crush, come right up. The brothers who run this business cooked up the idea in a place that prides itself on its simple values. Our dad was still living on the farm, and um, this is our last shot to, you know, make a living to maintain things. The goal became to keep this land in western Manitoba in the family. Back in the 80s, times were tough for the Warwicks. Lawrence Sr. with his wife Dorothy and seven children were struggling. Our mom lived from family lounge check to family lounge check. And it was, it was, uh, it was tough. This is where it started to go downhill. This land used to be full of animals. In the early 80s, interest rates were over 20%. Cattle prices plummeted, some missed loan payments, then foreclosure. My whole childhood growing up was like, you know, um, it was very hard. It was like the hardships on the farm. In the nearby town of Erickson, Lawrence Sr. did what he could to save his livelihood. After the bank foreclosed, he went to the local credit union. It, along with the Manitoba Agricultural Credit Corporation, financed the Warwick's debt. Lawrence Sr. no longer owned his land. He leased it back, scraping by minimum payment to minimum payment. The stress piles on. His marriage ends, but there was no giving up. My mom and dad worked really hard. Uh, my family worked hard. And I'm just going to let it go without trying. During the 90s, the family stuck together, doing everything from selling potatoes to bird seed to spruce trees to stay afloat. We've had lots of uh, um, small business entrepreneurial things that we did growing up on the farm, growing vegetables and selling cucumbers to the, to the neighbors and stuff. It's part of a necessity. <laughs> I mean, we had to make some kind of cash for ourselves somehow. The experiences shaped the men Eugene, Chris, and Lawrence Jr. would become. They really um, gave us that never quit attitude and, and to really face that, um, that any problem head on. It was never really an issue to, to quit. When one of us would be down, whatever, the other two would definitely pick the other guy up and, and uh, convince us that it's all worth it. It's all worthwhile. By the end of the 90s, scraping by wasn't enough. The Manitoba Credit Corporation had extended the family's lease on their land, but time was running out. At that point, they were, um, you know, they were taking our, our equipment away, and so when you don't have the equipment to actually physically farm, um, your options are kind of limited. <laughs> so what's the moisture at? It was time to leave the only place the brothers had ever called home, their farm near Minnedosa. You know, we left the farm with the intention that it wasn't over and we were going to do whatever was necessary to get back to the farm. And cause, because if we turned our backs and walked away, it would have been kind of admitting defeat and admitting that all that hard work and all those years were for nothing. And I don't think we were ready to accept that. No. Even no. today, so. It was off to Winnipeg. Eugene and youngest brother Eric were already in the city going to university. The idea of starting a restaurant came up. We've worked for ourselves all along and it would, would make sense for us to be, you know, working part-time jobs, you know, for, you know, Why no way. separately if we can pool our resources and our, our kind of sweat and work together and get further ahead that way. That's kind of always been our... Even if, yeah, yeah even if it was... Um, the same kind of income as a minimum wage job. At least we had ourselves to be accountable to. 
Lawrence had always had an interest in cooking. Eugene, Chris, and Lawrence had run a concession stand. The three, with brother Eric, went for it. Luckily, they have a sense of humor. After about a month of buying desserts that were pretty expensive, Christopher's like, I can make desserts. And he's never baked a day in his life. And he starts baking some cheesecakes. And I have a picture of him cutting his first Oreo cheesecake out of the springform pan. I think I was trying to cut it. And it was, it was a little bit overcooked. And it was like a 12 inch hockey puck. <laughs> While things were getting busier at the restaurant, the farm was teetering on the brink. They opened the restaurant in early 1999. The brothers only had until November of that year to make a payment on the farm, or it would be sold. The restaurant is doing well, buying them some time. They managed to make that payment, then the big payment. A year later, as the restaurant grows, they managed to buy back some of the farmland. Then, this year, the last parcel. It was like a big weight lifted off our shoulders, definitely. We felt like, you know, we're, we're doing things in the right direction. And finally, things were working out for us, you know, like, because for so long, you just, you know, headlong, there's always a challenge, there's always a wall to climb, and you know, for once, we're like, yeah, you know, we're, uh, we're kind of in the right direction, so. Oh, well, yeah, everything's starting to pay off. All the hard work that we've put in, all the sacrifice that we did, it's finally starting to pay off. Have you ever been told that you can come back from the dead? That's what it was like. Their mother, Dorothy, watched the restaurant grow busier and busier. Buying back the land was very special. You kind of look at them and say, these are my kids. Look what they're doing. These are my kids. It's magic. This is amazing. You know? Yeah, I'm so proud of them. He's on delivery. Oh. While Eugene, Chris, and Lawrence make the restaurant their full-time jobs, their youngest brother has made a different life for himself. The fact that my older brothers were able to take responsibility on the farm on their own shoulders and allow me to go to university, I'm actually quite, quite grateful for that. And I don't know if they know that or not, but that's, I think about that a lot. Lux Soleil means light from the sun. The family chose the name because the food they serve needs the sun to grow. And whenever possible, it's grown locally, bought from Manitoba farmers. It's our little way of, of, uh, of helping them out because we, we know the hardship and you know, it's, it's uh, um, the stress of, uh, of low prices and uh, adverse weather and, and everything else, it's like we can help out. They're able to help out because of the success at the restaurant. When it started up, it was just the four brothers working there. Now they have a staff of more than 20. We've talked to many people in the restaurant that have come in and have heard our story, you know, farm boys going to the city opening a restaurant. How did how'd that happen? And just to show them, hey, it is possible to kind of like do things a little out of the ordinary. The income from the restaurant supports three families plus the farm, and they can use that success to put even more into the farm. There's goats, there's sheep, there's, there's uh, planting a new crop, there's uh, accessing, you know, the world market. Um, so we're not, we're not always going to be satisfied with, with having uh, a small restaurant and having a couple cords of land, and it's that we're on a pursuit of, of, uh, of uh, coming into fruition what we what we'd like to happen. We have lots of hay. Um, we have a facility that we, we should be utilizing and we were thinking of maybe going to the cattle business. <laughs> or, or the lamb business or the tree farming business or I mean that's kind of innate in our nature is like not to think of the limitations but to think of the possibilities you know. The CBC's Krista Erickson in Winnipeg. Now please stay with us we have to take a short break but when we come back this story. We have something like 45 shops.